you know, when I first started watching Smackville, I was first a little skeptical about it. First a little skeptical. Because, you know, the first match was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Ali. A little skeptical about it. Because Ali came out to cricket. Wrestling fans came out to cricket. And, of course, you know, we had our main event as well. Which we all knew it was a guaranteed Kofi Kingston victorious. Guaranteed. He is not going to drop that title any time between now and SummerSlam. He's just not going to do it. Whether he even drops it at SummerSlam or not remains to be seen because of the whole Fox deal that's going on. You know, it all depends on a Fox. In my eyes, wants Kofi Kingston to be WWE champion. But that remains to be seen. Now, I was skeptical because of Ali being number one contender taking Finn Balor's spot. WWE playing up Finn Balor possibly having an injury uh, uh, throughout the week. And, and, and Shinsuke Nakamura might not even defending the icy strap tonight on Smackville. Now wrestling fans... When WWE plays up this kind of stuff, that always means that they're going to defend the championship. And Ali accepts the uh, a challenge by coming out and uh, saying, you're not going to win by forfeit. You're going to defend your title against me. Ali came out the crickets. Came out the crickets. Now, me, personally... I felt sorry for Ali in, in this uh, situation. You want to know the truth? Because out of all the repackaging that they have been doing, all the promos WWE has been doing as of late wrestling fans for Ali, and that was the response that he got in Nashville, which told me a few different things for Ali. Number one, that's it. that was either the wrong city to reemerge Ali, or it's just or it's just not going to work with the wrestling fans with Ali anymore. I mean, it's just one or the other. But I really hope, I really hope that something happens. That a spark happens with the wrestling fans, with Ali, and, and he gets something. He gets something. Whether it's an IC championship, whether he gets paired with somebody and he gets a tag team title, SmackDown tag team championship, something. He had so much promise. He had such a promising future on SmackDown Live. He was supposed to be in Kofi Kingston's spot right now. And an uh, 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 injury, just like that, put him in the nobody cricket corner, as we're seeing right now. So I hope something happens. And quite frankly, Shinsuke Nakamura and Ali had great chemistry tonight. Ali came up short. Of course he did. Nakamura was not going to drop his championship to Ali at Smackville. Which was nothing more than a branded house show. That's all it was. Which honestly, I had no, no problem with it. Because it was an hour long and it gave us, it gave us stuff to look forward to because that was one thing that I saw and I thought hey Ali Nakamura give us some more of those matches get Ali to a, a, the right place and bam I'd like to see that again 
or matter of fact, put Nakamura and Ali with the with the right crowd, and you got your money's worth in my eyes. But Nakamura goes over on Smackville and retains the Intercontinental Championship. Elias comes out, and of course he gets. The same reaction that he always gets, which is nobody wants to see him on TV anymore doing his usual shtick, especially when he is uh, part of Shane McMahon's uh, group. Nobody wants to see Elias. When he's part of the Main Street Posse PG era, nobody wants to see Elias. And anyway, I had never been so excited to see uh, Kevin Owens ever because the, the, the more people shut up uh, Elias these days, the better off it is. And that's exactly what happened. Not only did he shut him up on the mic, but he also shut him up with he shut him up with a stunner as well. At the end of the matchup, one, two, three, Kevin Owens wins. Really wasn't much to the matchup, and that's just fine with me. Honestly, I wish they would have uh, put something else on Smackville. Other than that segment, I understand why they did uh, uh, Elias. It kind of went with where they were, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. So, you know, Elias' concert, Nashville. But, I mean, that's the cheesy WWE thing to do. But whatever. I would have liked to see a tag team matchup. Or, you know, or put uh, a moment with Bliss if you're going to put some talking segment on there. Or something along those lines. Speaking of that, you know, you know, do something different Tuesday. You know, have a moment of bliss on Tuesday and have the Miz wrestle on Tuesday. Don't have another Miz TV come SmackDown Live on Tuesday. Don't have the same usual thing that we see every single Tuesday night and every single Monday. Do something different this coming week. Please, WWE. But that's what we saw with the Elias segment, which honestly made me cringe. Y'all let me know what you're thinking about all this stuff down in the comments below. All right, wrestling fans. So far, it's just been kind of a, a decent show so far that I've been going over. I mean, honestly, you know, Smackville... I would watch another one of these if they put on uh, uh if they put on another uh, house show branded. Just take out the Elias junk. Who wants to see this? Nobody. And of course, the main event. Now, throughout the night, we saw Samoa Joe talk. We saw Kofi Kingston cut his promo. And quite frankly, I would have much rather had Dolph Ziggler come out and or had Dolph Ziggler cut a promo in the back. One reason. You made Samoa Joe look like an epic fool tonight, WWE. You had Samoa Joe cut a promo, and he was the one that got his shoulders pinned to the mat. One, two, three. You are making us believe less, less, and even lesser in J Samoa Joe. I, I, I don't understand this concept of of uh, burying Samoa Joe. I don't understand this concept, but. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, it was a good contest for what it was, but it was very predictable, just like the Elias segment. 
that was very predictable unless somebody came out. We all knew Kevin Owens was going to win that. This match, very predictable. Kofi Kingston's not going to lose anytime soon. But I honestly thought that Dolph Ziggler was out there to take the pinfall. I mean, Dolph Ziggler is out there, you know, nine times out of ten to take the one, two, three uh, loss. But he didn't this time. I don't know if it's because of what he did on Tuesday and he got all that hill heat. They don't want to kill it yet or what. But Samoa Joe does not need to be cutting promos and, you know, Especially like this. And then going out there and, and, and taking the one, two, three pin. Still, he doesn't. You all do that way too much with Samoa Joe. If you want him to take the pinfall, you should have had Dolph Ziggler cut the promo. Especially after coming off of what he did uh, on Tuesday. That's the only thing I am going to like really gripe about. About this match. That's it. But anyway. This is your Smackville review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did. Leave me a big thumbs up. And of course leave me a comment down below. And of course share this video as well. Make sure you do that. Make sure you do all three of those. Because the more those are done. The more YouTube. Pushes. This video. And that is very important. And also become a subscriber today. Because that is a very important thing for this channel. To make sure it grows. And go back and watch anything you missed. A lot of good content out there. Including my trip to the Bahamas. Which was a blast. Wrestling fans. That was a blast. That on the road was a blast. So go and check that out as well. All live on the channel right now. And until I see you again, this is Webby, and I'll catch you on the other side. Talk to you later.